Well, hello there, my fellow heroes from all dimensions and beyond. This is Melody of Valentine, and welcome back to Genshin Impact. Yes, my thing finally updated. Yay! And we're about to go on a new adventure. Let's see what's in store. the first time we came here. Oh, Paimon remembers. Nahida's consciousness had been trapped by the doctor, but we followed the clues she left behind to help her. <laughs> Good memory, Paimon. So much time has already passed since then, and it seems Sumeru's changing for the better now that Nahida's in charge, right? Paimon just hopes this peace will last a long time, and then Nahida won't have any more new problems to deal with. <laughs> yes, but as long as we're around. Yeah, guess you're right. Hmm. We somehow always find ourselves right in the thick of it. Who knows what will happen next? Come to think of it, maybe it's all because of you. Maybe you're just a magnet for trouble. Really, Paimon? I was just thinking that you might be the problem, Paimon. She was super tired. Paimon got caught in some strange whirlpool and sucked out into sea. And even then, you fished Paimon out. <sighs> anyway, for Nahida's sake, maybe we should think about heading to our next destination for now. Next stop, Fontaine! Ah, look who it is. Running into you in a place like this? I can see you two still love wandering around. Hey, Dea. Oh, it's just wandering around. We're usually taking care of some serious business. Even though it may have nothing to do with our journey. Really? But never mind that. What brings you here? I just finished a commission in the desert for a usual client of mine. <laughs> nothing too interesting. Just escorting a shipment of goods. I'm on my way to report back. That's when I saw you two all the way over there. Chatting away. What were you two talking about, anyway? We're preparing to leave Samaru and head to Fontaine. Huh? Y you serious? Can't say I saw that coming. Hmm, but you are travelers, after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one it's place. It's not like we're not coming back! Bumping into you like this will become a rarity. Ah, uh, I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. Hey, how about I gather a few mercs to escort you two? What do you say? Thanks, but no need. Oh, Paimon had no clue you'd miss us so much. But don't worry, we'll come back to see everyone when we get a chance. <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. Yeah. So, uh, when are you leaving? We'll leave, we'll leave as soon as we finish a few more preparations. Oh, wait a sec. Paimon just remembered there are still a few dishes in Sumeru that Paimon hasn't tried yet. Now, where is that list Paimon made? Oh, no. Mm. There goes my wallet. Wait a minute, why is that guy... Huh? I see. Guess you won't be needing a going away party or anything. Mysterious guy. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> by the way, should we go say bye to Nahida? In her case, she'll know from our dreams anyway. Oh, good point. Then there's no need to bother her in the real world. Then, I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me. Take care. Goodbye, dear. Bye-bye, Sumeru. It's not like we're not... It's, it's not like we're not gonna be back here. After settling matters in Sumeru, you approach the border uh, with Fontaine. And 
if I remember correctly, this is the land of water. So we're going to be able to have water powers. Yee. That's, that's why I changed out uh, Kokomi for Nahida. If I'm going to be having water powers, there's no sense in having two people with water. <gasps> oh my god, it's beautiful. I'm actually tearing up at how beautiful it is. I am definitely taking a picture of this viewpoint. Oh my gosh. So I gotta go over there. Ow. My face! I did some... Wow. Oh, there's a yeah. thing here. No, I didn't mean to do that! Oh, that hurt a bit. Ow! My ankles. They are broken. Hi, turtle boy. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with you. You guys are so cute. I want to hug you, but you guys are pointy and spiky. Is something? Nope. Oh, sun crab! I can swim there. If I have to, I can take a break on a boat. Like so. See? <laughs> Oh, wow. <sighs> Let my thing regenerate. Um. <laughs> Ploop. This is going to be unknown territory, folks. Okay, maybe I should slow my roll a little bit. I think this is probably why they had that thing to unlock a boat. I mean, there's a thing above me. Or is it on that? <gasps> it's right on that bow! Oh, my first uh, thingy for for this land. Oh, make it, make it, make it. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, thank God. Are you fucking kidding me? Do I have to... I want this water thingy. Ah. Uh. Do I actually have to... Yes! <laughs> and... Ploop! Ah! Finally! I should have did this by boat. After crossing all that sand and water, we finally made it. Oh, this must be Fontaine's port. Wow, everything looks so advanced in Fontaine. Paimon's heard that the industry here is extremely developed. 
it. And there are all kinds of unusual machines. Oh, it's even more impressive than I expected. Just seeing the sights as a tourist is nice, but maybe it would be better if we found something to do. What do you think? Let's start by meeting the Hydro Archon. Good idea! Nahida gave us loads of useful information. Seeking out the Seven is probably still our best source for information at this point. Our journey is to find my sibling, and also find the truth. Yeah! The more we can learn, the better. So, what do you think the Hydro Archon's like? Will we get along? Nahida said that she has a very unique personality. Whatever that means. Oh, shit. To learn about a nation's god, start with the nation's people. There seems to be some locals talking over there. Let's go see if we can join the party. Hmm. I mean, that's one way to do it. If you ask me, it's a tragedy how things ended for him. Clearly, he was a pretty decent person. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind of ending for him. I thought he would at least fight on a little longer for his family. I was expecting a sudden plot twist, but it's a pity that it never happened. Still, his story is quite the tearjerker. Uh, excuse me. Can I help you too? I couldn't help but notice you standing here listening. Oh, there's somebody uh, there! Hi! <laughs> We're travelers new to Fontaine. And we had something we wanted to ask, but you seem to be really busy talking about some kind of play, so we didn't want to interrupt. A <laughs> uh, play? Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about something that really happened. In fact, it's a case that was just heard a few days ago. Really? Like... A real trial? But the way you were talking about it and the words you used just now made it sound like some kind of story. Well, good tales are often based on true stories, aren't they? And what you see in reality may also be someone deliberately putting on an act while harboring ulterior motives. Whether something is true or not simply isn't that important. The main thing is whether the story being acted out on the stage is What the fuck enough. is wrong with these people? Oh, but it looks like you're not from around here. You probably don't know that the Fontaine Court of Justice is called the mm. Opera Epicles, or more commonly known as just the Opera House. So they see trials as a sort of opera? But, uh, shouldn't court cases be treated a little more seriously? Not to question Fontaine's way of doing things. It's just that putting someone on trial is usually a very serious thing. <laughs> no worries. Other visitors to Fontaine have wondered the same thing. You could say that we just don't want to waste the moving stories behind those cases. And as for your worries about whether the cases are treated with due reverence, we have the absolutely just and honorable Chief Justice Nouvellet. As well as the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, a machine created by the Archon. Between the machine okay, and the I Chief Justice, this place false like charges Italy, and injustice it's are more a like of the past now. A judgment device created by the Archon. The Oratrice? Is it some kind of machine too? Oh, Paimon's curious. We should check it out if we get the chance. Uh... Wait. I almost forgot to ask you a question. Um, do you know what we should do if we want to meet the Hydro Archon? Oh, that's easy. Just go to the Opera House. Lady Farina practically lives there. You could definitely say it's her biggest passion. Ha. Uh, I think what they mean is that they wish to speak with the Archon personally. In that case, I'm afraid it's going to be a tad more difficult. You'll have to make an appointment well in advance, and it'll depend on whether or not she has any time slots available. Make an appointment? Oy vey. Huh. Is the Hydro Archon super busy taking care of official stuff? Wait, didn't you say that she's always at the Opera House? No, no. Lady Farina seldom takes an interest with the nation's affairs. The reason it's difficult to make an appointment is simply because she's incredibly popular. 
That's right. After all, she is the Archon. Though she may tend to get a little dramatic from time to time, people can't get enough of her. Huh. First time Paimon's ever heard of an Archon being described that way before. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Wait! Paimon gets now! The Hydro Archon is kinda like a big celebrity here, right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could even say our mascot. What the heck? <laughs> Hang on. This is still Fontaine's Archon you're talking about. You should show some more respect. Yes, you're right. I guess I should at least try to be a little more respectful in front of visitors. Otherwise, I might get arrested and find myself face to face with Monsieur Nouvellet. Yeah, this place is like <laughs> France. On. Sure, there's a lot of laws here, but nobody's going to be arrested for saying something disrespectful about the Hydro Archon. Seems the people of Fontaine really like the Hydro Archon, but they don't appear to revere her. Alright, I think we get it. Thank you! At least we now know that we can find the Hydro Archon at the Opera House. Hmm... But who knows how long making an appointment will take? <sighs> Guess we could have a look around the city in the meantime. Hey! What are you looking over there for? There's, uh, there's a girl over there. She's been standing alone for quite some time. Huh. Maybe something's the matter. <gasps> she isn't going to jump into the water, is she? Uh, maybe we better go check on her. Ah, uh, you think? How about we get some tickets to the next trial? Hmm... I think we'd better wait and see what kind of case it is first. Uh, you okay there? Oh, uh, you're kitty hello pussy. there! Excuse me! Are you alright? Huh? Ah... Uh. I'm fine. Thanks. Oh, okay then. We just noticed that you seem to be worried about something. About many things, actually. But there's nothing I can do but just keep my troubles to myself. I was just reminiscing about a place my brother and I would play when we were kids. It was just atop that hill over there. See? Uh, you're pointing at the sea. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that you and your brother lived in the water? Maybe they're mermaids? No people call the waters around Fontaine a sea. It's actually just an inland lake that's filled with fresh water. And no, I can still see that hill clearly in my memories. Now, it's been completely submerged. He would skip and jump, tossing sand in the wind. The sun shone brightly. And the air was filled with the scent of the sea. Oh, there's somebody else over there. But now, the water is gradually swallowing our memories. <sighs> it won't be long before it swallows us. Uh, sorry. Paimon doesn't really get what you mean. Their home is slowly uh, sinking. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Are you Lynette's new friends? Oh, and you are? Thanks for looking after my sister. She often comes here to reminisce about our childhood, that's all. There's no need for any concern. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. If I had to guess, Ooh. I'd say you must be travelers from abroad. Um, nice to meet yeah. you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the traveler. We just arrived in Fontaine. Nice to meet you. We were just talking with your sister. Uh... Even though we didn't really get what she was saying. Also, oh, uh, are you guys adopted? It's unusual because for she's a to cat be so willing girl. to talk with anyone. In fact, she seldom speaks at all. I'm usually the only one she ever talks to. Oh, really? Then you two are just like us! Paimon's always the one talking for some reason. You're one to talk. There's hardly anything left for me to say with you around Paimon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you think it is? I also think my brother can be too talkative at times. Uh, 
<laughs> Seems you were right, Paimon. We are quite similar. <laughs> so, what did Lynette mean just now when she said that the water is engulfing your memories? And that it won't be long before it engulfs you, too? Oh, that. It's from a prophecy that's been circulating in Fontaine for some time now. Well, I suppose prophecy isn't exactly the right word, because that implies a certain amount of uncertainty. There's no doubt about what's happening in Fontaine now. Oh? What's happening to Fontaine? Where to begin? Hmm... Let's put that question on hold for a moment. We still haven't formally greeted each other yet, have we? Uh, did all the introductions earlier not count? Hello, Traveler. Oh. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. And hello, Paimon. Hey! Why didn't Paimon get a handshake? Oh. You're not poking fun at Paimon, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Please, don't take offense. Just consider it a sort of etiquette we have here in Fontaine when making new friends. You should remember it. It might prove useful. Um... Oh. Alright then. I think he's teasing well, you, Paimon. I'm just happy to have a local friend now. By the way, we were just getting ready to go to the Opera House to meet the Hydro Archon. Would you be able to show us the way? Who's the person dancing around hmm. over there? So you're going to see Lady Farina? No problem at all. In fact, I was planning to go to the Opera House later myself. I'll gladly take you once I finish things here. Please, follow me. I kinda wanna check out that person, but... Oh. Uh, you said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady Farina has come to see you. Huh? Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Whoa. with nothing at all. Raise your glasses in celebration! If you don't have one, then just raise your hand in lieu. Um... As you can all see, two unfamiliar travelers have arrived in our nation. Come, let us make a <gasps> toast in honor her of this traveler and her companion, who have journeyed here from distant lands. Oh, that one looks like a captain. Uh, is she talking about us? Uh, we're the only two newcomers here. Nobody seems to be holding a glass. I've long heard of the turmoil and chaos you left in your wake as you visited other nations. But I welcome you nevertheless. Wait a minute. No, turmoil and chaos? I, I didn't... Um, personally. I helped those nations. Fear is for insignificant cowards. I am a god, and I will never entertain the notion of such meaningless wariness. You can be rest assured. I see clearly your sincerity. Um, of course, okay. seeking an audience with me is the most sensible thing to do. It will allow you to truly behold my power and witness my authority. 
Intelligent people always gather under the <laughs> correct banner. Uh, okay. I, Thosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. <laughs> well, uh, finding the Archon was easy enough. Yeah, Paimon still can't believe it. Feels like we've only been here for a few minutes. I got a feeling it's the husband that does that guy. The Hydro Archon uh, entrance was. Uh, how should Paimon describe it? A little over the top? Ahem. <clears throat> uh, Miss Hydro Archon? How did you know we were coming? Ah, I see. As Outlanders, you inevitably lack even some of the most basic understanding. Don't forget that even the gods can be divided into the mediocre and the excellent. I suppose it's only natural for you to be awestruck by my abilities. Does that have something to do with that eye of yours? Stop and consider. Do you really have the noble qualities and etiquette necessary to communicate with a god? It's that guy. All it takes is a flick of my finger for me to know everything about you. Whoa. Talk about sounding high and mighty. Feels like she can't get over herself. <laughs> oh? What's with these looks? Perhaps the welcoming ceremony still isn't enough? Hmm. What else should I say then? Hmm. Uh. Is she waiting for us to start talking? Wow, I didn't expect to see Lady Farina here. What a surprise! Wait, does this mean they're the legendary blonde traveler? How did I not notice before? Hey, what's all the commotion? Oh, is that Lady Farina? Is there some kind of drama going on? Of course, that's the blonde traveler. The one all those stories are about. Lady Farina came here to personally see her. Oh, I bet this is going to be the duel of the century. Duel of the century? Ooh, We're not fighting. I knew Lady Farina would never disappoint. <laughs> yes, but don't get too excited now. My dear believers and spectators alike tend to get quite rowdy. And despite the noise, I've come to tolerate all their ruckus. Ugh. You may consider this my reward to all of you. I have determined that there will be an epic duel between myself and this traveler from another I land. I wasn't just I didn't want to fight you, I just wanted to talk to uh, you. Now she wants to fight? Are we getting a little ahead of ourselves? <laughs> Bring it on. Not afraid. Might I remind you that this is a duel against the divine? High five gods before what are you buddy? trying to do, traveler? Provoking a god in front of her people? Hey, you're the one who said he wanted a Stand duel. Down, Florent. I admire her bravery. Few have the courage to draw their sword against a god. She is obviously a true warrior. <laughs> Unfortunately, people nowadays only crave to be thrilled, and a mere duel will not slake their thirst for excitement. Oh, yeah, she's right. Just a duel wouldn't be all that interesting. <clears throat> On Araneus, criminals are always requesting duels to defend their honor. I'm getting a bit old, to tell the truth. You see, then, as the god of justice, I shall face this traveler in another kind of duel. A duel in court! What? Oh, all right! Now that'll be worth seeing! Right. This is Fontaine, after all. Such a grand opera house, it would be a pity not to use it. Why do you care so much about the crowd's reactions? 
seems you've spent a little too much time in the opera. Paimon, shush! Besides, how exactly do you plan to have a duel in court? You mean you're going to put us on trial? We haven't committed any crimes. <laughs> oh, we have reason to put you on trial. It's obvious, isn't it? Obvious? According to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within Fontaine city limits during the first three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? Paimon walks oh, around like so that. That's what they've done wrong. Mm, that's uh, she Lady Farina. Okay, she's seriously no pulling out laws out of her ass. Like she does. You call that obvious? What kind of law is that? Wait, flying object? <gasps> you mean Paimon? Uh. Precisely. Now, if you two have no objections, then in the name of the Hydro Archon, I order your arrest. My apologies, Lady Farina. I don't mean to spoil the fun, but if you would allow me to interject, I don't think that Paimon here meets the definition of a flying object. You tell her, Linny! Finally, someone who's not crazy! How could anyone call Paimon a flying object? Ah, great magician, Linny. My beloved citizen. I'll permit you to object, but how exactly do you plan to prove your claim? <laughs> As a magician who just rained on your parade, I naturally should shoulder the responsibility of saving the show. So, with such an audience gathered here, allow me to perform a trick for everyone. Ta-da! Ah, oh, when Lenny patted you on the back. There. As you can all clearly see, Paimon should be classified as, well, something like a balloon. This rope has been in the Traveler's hand all along. It was just that no one could see it before. <laughs> you call that magic? <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Nice one. Huh. I'm not sure what to think. It seems Lady Farina's charges no longer hold water. twist that I enjoy. With you here, today's performance can finally be called complete. Performance? You see all this as a performance? In which case, consider the matter of your trial resolved. The God of Justice will not bring charges against an innocent person. But when there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. <laughs> Jeez, I do not like her I at all. I look forward to seeing your upcoming performance at the Opera House, Mr. Linny and Miss Lynette. That's enough for now. Toodaloo! I don't like her. And I thought, and I thought the Raiden Shogun was a bitch. And just like that, she's gone! Well, that's the most unpredictable Archon Paimon's ever seen. You never even had a chance to ask her anything. But that's a 
problem for future Paimon. That whole scene just now was really... <sighs> Thanks for bailing us out, Lenny. Don't mention it. I just happened to remember that there was such a law, so I did a little preparation, just in case. I didn't think it would actually come in handy. So, now do you see what kind of god Lady Farina is? She can be a bit confusing at times, but she is still amenable to reason. Yeah, confusing in a good way is, is a good way to put it. Anyway, Paimon had no idea you were a magician, Linny. I kind of like figured. You'll be performing at the Opera House, right? <laughs> I just know a few simple tricks I use to make a living. Lynette is my assistant. It will actually be my first time performing on the most prestigious stage in Fontaine, the Opera House. But isn't the Opera House where criminal trials are held in Fontaine? When there are no public trials being held, the Opera House hosts a variety of other performances. To the people of Fontaine, the line between a trial and a performance can be a little blurred. And yeah, speaking I of performances, I would be remiss to forego this opportunity gifted by fate. Might I invite the two of you to see my performance? My brother's always excited to make new friends. Oh, sure. We don't really have anything to do now, and we wanted to go to the Opera House anyway. I would be delighted. Splendid. In that case, why don't we go together? I'll show you the way. I just have something to take care of first. Is there anything I can help? Oh, you really mean it? Then I'll take you up on your offer. This is a magical item known as a magic pocket. Perhaps you can help me distribute them to the people here. Oh! It looks like a re one of those reusable bags. Huh? What are they going to use it for? About that... Hmm. You asked me before about the prophecy, right? Let me start by telling you a little more about what it entails. I'm not sure exactly when it began, but a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. It says that every person in Fontaine is born with sin. No matter how the Nation of Justice holds trial after trial, this sin cannot be absolved. Until one day, the water levels in Fontaine will rise, and the sinful people will slowly be drowned. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. That sounds pretty gloomy. Why are people in Fontaine born with sin? What is that supposed to mean? There are lots of guesses. Some say that the ancestors of Fontaine stole the power of the seas and stirred its wrath. Others say that the people of Fontaine never heeded the first Hydro Archon's warnings and offended Celestia. But here in Fontaine, evidence is what matters. There hasn't been concrete evidence for any of these claims, so they can only be regarded as conjecture. If even the people in Fontaine don't know what sin they committed, wouldn't it be better just to ignore the prophecy completely? Why bother feeling guilty all the time? That's exactly what the people did at first. But in the last few years, the water levels in Fontaine have actually started rising. But now the water is engulfing our memories. Hmm. Many places have already been completely submerged, and now lie beneath the sea. Many people carry on with their lives as before and shrug it off as a natural phenomenon. But my family and I think that the people of Fontaine shouldn't ignore the possibility, which would end up sentencing them to death. We hope that at least the people who reside near the waterfront can move away before it's too late. So, we've started distributing magic pockets to them. As a magical item, these magic pockets have astonishing capacity. I'm sure they will come in handy when people are moving their belongings. Oh! Paimon gets it! It's like preparing for a rainy day! But this is more than a bit of rain. 
If the prophecy is true, then there's no way to prevent a disaster? Hmm. Perhaps only absolute power could ever contend with such a catastrophe. <laughs> but who knows? We're just tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. Now, if you'd like to help, then please give these magic pockets to anyone nearby. Be sure to convince them to take it, regardless of what they say. Um... Okay. <sighs> Let's try. What's this? Uh, so you also believe in the prophecy. <laughs> Keep it. I won't have any use for it. Is that clockwork structure? You mean you don't believe in the prophecy? No, no, I believe in the prophecy. But I also believe in another story. The story says that people once lived in the ocean. They were one with the ocean and couldn't live apart from it. But as time wore on, people desired to live on land and developed blood vessels, encapsulating the sea within their bodies. Thus could people set foot on land. So, if you ask me, when the water rises and takes us all, it'll be like we're going home. Oh. We hadn't heard that one before. But people can't live underwater. They'll die. You should probably still take it. <sighs> All right, I'll take it. I guess I just feel that being dissolved into the water doesn't necessarily mean death. Oh, this looks so cool. It's a clockwork soldier. Okay, next person. This dude. So you're the blonde traveler that everyone's been talking about. My apologies for not recognizing you earlier. Here you go. Oh, a magic pocket? Seems you really thought of everything. I guess it's better to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Thanks. Oh, please, also thank the magician on my behalf when wow, you get the Wow, this guy chance. Was, it was a lot easier to convince than the, the other guy. But I got a feeling the last person is not that simple to... Oh, there's another one of those clockwork guys. Oh, this one's like a general. Oh, this one is on a ship. Oh, this is the captain lady. Huh? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I don't want that thing. The way I see it, if the prophecy's true, it's still gonna be a long time before the water can cover everything. Life is all about living in the moment. What use is there in worrying about the future all the time? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Really? You should still take it. You never know when it'll come in handy. Oh, all right, fine. Thanks. It's just that... If I start moving, that means I've already given up on the life I have now. I'd really rather not. I guess that's fair. But they gave people oh, their magic you pockets. You already handed out all of the magic pockets? Hmm. That was fast. So, what did people have to say? I bet you heard some uh, interesting opinions. Many were quite stubborn. Yes, but that will change once disaster strikes. I know they'll change their minds, so it's only right to help them prepare. Is there anything else you need to do before we leave? Yes, one last thing. I have the magic pockets made by a workshop in the Court of Fontaine. Since we're out and about, I was thinking about bringing him some more materials. So, you want to collect materials? Just tell us what the materials look like and we'll help! Many hands make light work! Uh -huh. Oh, that would be much appreciated. 
We'll need some Romaritime flowers. I remember seeing them near the waterfront on the east side of the harbor. Oh. So. Where's. I should take care of this <laughs> over here first. Wait a minute. Is it not in here? Oh! It's an elevator! I'm moving on up to the inside to that grand apartment in the sky. <laughs> Oh god. Sorry for being weird, folks. My lord, just how high does this go? How high is this going? Okay. The world opens itself for those with noble hearts. <laughs> Ooh, I unlocked more of the world. Did it just flood it? Start flooding from the. Is. Just a normal statue of seven. Uh, water is speaking to me? <laughs> oh, wow. I'll be lonely going under the water alone. <laughs> then I'll fish you out again. We have aquatic stamina now. So wait a minute. Let's resonate with hydro. Oh, and it just got a trophy. And since I'm here, I might as well give the thing I have... Oh! Okay, so it's still t uh, 19 I gotta find. Oh wow, my stuff is blue now! Da-ba-dee-da-ba-da! <gasps> Kitty person! Hug. Please, I hope this person ends up becoming somebody that I can meet later on. Hi, oh, she's so fluffy.
be on. There we go. Water gun powers. I love this. This is so much fun. I got the stuff. You made quick work of that. I can tell you're an experienced traveler. I've also finished collecting a few here. Maybe next time you'll feel like helping too, Lynette. No way. I'm in power saving mode today. Otherwise, I fear I may not have any energy left for the performance at the opera. Power house. saving mode? Why, you <sighs> robot? Fine. Though the performance is still a long way off. Now that we're finished here, we should get ready to head back to the Court of Fontaine. So, we're going to the Court of Fontaine before we head to the opera house? Good. Paimo wants a tour of Fontaine's largest city and try. And of course, we're not gonna give you an, enough time to wait. Come. Shh. <gasps> Have you noticed that person over there, the young girl? Huh? What's wrong with her? I didn't notice anything. <laughs> She's obviously a thief. Magicians and thieves practice similar methods. We divert attention, and a distracted audience is one that won't discover what you're really doing. Watch her movements carefully. Oh, he's right! Shh, keep your voice down. We need to think of a way to catch her, but it seems she's very alert. Perhaps we should split up. Mm-hmm. You two can ride the lift over there and wait up top. I bet that'll be her escape route if she tries to run. Mm-hmm. Understood. All right, let's go. Finally. Oh, wow. My, my patterns also changed too. Oh, this looks so cool. Oh, even the... <gasps> wow, oh. now the, my, the thing <sighs> in my flower scene. It seems to my even my feather change color. Holy cow!
time to catch us a thief. This is the spot where Linny wanted us to wait. There she is. Get ready to stop her. Oh no! Did she notice us? She started running the other direction! What should we do? Should we chase her? Our job is to block this path. <sighs> You're right. She might also be trying to lure us away. You wait, but there's no sign of the thief. Nothing's happened for a while now. I don't wonder if Lenny caught the thief. Since there's no reason to stay here. Yeah, let's go. Are you sure that's all she took? You should check to make sure you're not missing anything else. N no, that was all. Oh, I can't thank you enough. I didn't notice a thing earlier. Anyway, I should be going now. Thanks again. Oh, were you returning with the thief had stolen? That's right. Pity I wasn't able to catch her. She distracted me by dropping the thing she stole on the ground. By the time I looked back, she was already gone. I saw the general direction she went, but Linny twisted his ankle, and I needed to make sure he was okay. Oh, did you get hurt, Linny? I'll be all right. It's just a twisted ankle, that's all. In fact, it's feeling better already. If you want to play at being a hero, at least try not to get hurt doing it. Imagine what would happen if you managed to derail our performance as a result. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Sorry, Lynette. <sighs> I have to admit that the thief was even more skilled than I had anticipated. But at least we were able to get the stolen items back, so it wasn't a complete failure. What a slippery little thief! Guess things turned out alright in the end, though. Lenny's initiative paid off! Alright, let's put this little detour behind us. We should go to the Court of Fontaine now. Okay, so this is going to be the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, please hit the like button. And if there's anything that you like about this, please comment below. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and ring a ding ding that notification bell so you won't miss another video from me. And this is Melody of Valentine Fame. May the light in your heart shine forever. Farewell for now, and, and let's see about part two. Bye bye.